Letting go of things, I old things I thought I wanted. Hmm, a real skills workshop about feeling more emotionally free, having some space, having the freshness and new possibilities, which old things can kind of clunk us up around, can't it? They really can. They keep us stuck really hard. Um, I know that for myself, sometimes until I clear the old stuff, I just, I can have lots of dreams and ideas, but I just don't have the energy or the focus to move forward. I don't have the space to move forward on something new, um, even if it's really alive for me because of all the old things, the noise of the old things, the space they take, the money they occupy. Um, it just is really hard to be as in tune and aligned when I have old things. And I noticed that I went to San Francisco on Thursday night with a friend to go see a musical. And when I moved here, I had a lot of dreams about like, I was going to be in, I'm an hour from San Francisco right now. I'm just going to be in the city like every month doing all these cool things with all these people. And I was like, once I moved here, I'm like, oh, normally I do this after work and it's a two hour drive after work because of rush hour. And the parking is just abysmal in San Francisco. And I don't like to parallel park in crowded streets and people honking at me because I'm like trying to light things up. And so, you know, at first, the first year I did go a number of times and then now it's like once a year I go in for a fun time or if a, a visitor comes out of out of town. But there's a nostalgia and a expectation that I kind of carry around that. Like, I should be doing this. I live next to one of the greatest cities in the world within driving distance. Why am I not going to musicals and plays and seeing my friends and creating these adventures in the park all the time? And that can stop me from creating adventures here because I live also 10 minutes from the SAP Center, which is has all the same plays as San Francisco does, all the same, like there's a ton of stuff, but because my attention and focus is still directed a little bit at San Francisco, I'm like, oh, I won't do the thing locally because I'm going to go to San Francisco and then I don't do any of them. Yeah. So that's just, it's just sucking some energy and that's what I'm going to focus on for myself because we like to release things as we go through our calls ourselves because I want to have freedom. I want to be creating really amazing things here and now and not be going, oh, I'm going to hold off on that until I go to the city, which means it never happens and I miss out on things. I'm Rick from Thriving Now. This is Kathy Bartuli from the Intimacy Dojo and Thriving Now. And we're co-creating this workshop with you. Um, if you'd like to imagine this a little different than like a TED talk or a, something with a stage, we want to encourage people to feel the geometry of a circle. And in a circle, we can expand. As more people come in, we just make a little more room for them. And um, while we're facilitators, the chat is open. We invite you to give feedback, ask questions and things like that. We may ask for volunteers. Um, there's, there's a desire on our part that like, one of the things that I let go of was the idea of leading in the traditional sense. I want, when I landed on something, when I let go of like the old ideas about what it means to be successful and effective and have a, an audience, dot, 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 right? And I, I still work with people that have that, but it feels to them heavy. And so, when we're talking about old things, it can be an old paradigm, an old idea of, oh, well, if I'm successful, this is what it would look like. You know, I, I love the idea that we have a circle and that I recognize and acknowledge the wisdom that's going to flow through some of you into the chat, into the call, into our shared awareness, and that this is not this is a workshop. This is not a, a passive experience. Now, so when we talk about old things, it can be, oh, you know, I bought that and I really intended to learn it and it's sitting there. And every time I walk by, there's a part of me that recognizes that my hobby time, even though I'm not spending any of it, on that, there's a sort of a placeholder. It's holding, it's holding some of our life force because it's old, it's not fresh, 
it's not what you would even necessarily choose if you were to really consider it now. So it can be a thing. It can be the hobby that doesn't even need a thing. It can be a relationship. Um, I, in this preparation for the call, I became aware that, you know, one of the things about like your Facebook friends list is that you can be sort of in contact with people that you're really not alive with in your, your life. And because these people at one time were dance partners or even close friends or even part life partners, there's a sense of like, oh, I'm not wanting to label them an old thing, but there's not really space. And so that's another aspect of it is things that take up space. Um, and also, um, what was the other thing? Yeah, person, place thing you remember maybe, maybe you always dreamed of going on an adventure to like i i dreamed of going on an adventure to italy living there with my family for six months it never happened but if but there's a part of my energy field just touching on it that sort of feels like oh yeah my living someplace else is reserved for italy like it still feels like a five or six hmm, probably gonna write that one down okay so you see this can apply across a lot of things and it can definitely apply to clutter. Okay. It can definitely apply to something that you, you bought, you thought you wanted, it came into your world. And now it's like, it's just not going. So we're going to, you choose, we're going to be stepping through this process with you. Um, and we're inviting you to actually do the work of and identifying with us and deciding what you'd like, Kathy. I would invite you to actually write in the chat or write down in front of you what the thing is you choose. One of the ways we procrastinate and avoid feelings is by switching to different things. We kind of bounce or think, oh, this other thing is more important. Oh, I'm going to do this. So we never really focus and dig deep with any of them. So our system doesn't learn how to clear around it. So we invite you pick one thing and don't make it your most valuable, like heart, like my mother on her deathbed handed this to me and said, please keep this for the rest of your life and pass it forward. Don't pick the Mount Everest of things. Pick something that maybe is, is, has value. You want to, you want to practice clearing it out and getting clarity around it. But, you know, again, if it's the Mount Everest of things, it's not going to be useful. And if it's something like, oh, I totally don't care, it's not going to be as useful either. So pick something in the middle and write it down and you're welcome to share it in the chat because Otherwise, we can. Our, our system will, if we're starting to get towards something that's tender, our human brains are very clever and we'll distract ourselves and kind of like, oh, wait, I'm looking at that. No, that, that, that. Oh, the call's over. Never mind. Um, I'll work at it later. And I'll let us know <laughs> later. Late, does everyone know what later means? I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just, if you feel a little called out, please know I'm pointing fingers back at myself just as severely. It's why I talked about like the San Francisco dream for me. Um, and a couple of people shared a lot of stuff I'm holding on to has sentimental value, happy memories of happy moments in the past. Abs we absolutely get that. Um, and we invite you to pick one thing. Again, not all of them because it's a way to distract and avoid. Pick one thing. We're going to go through a process with you to give you clarity. We're not going to tell you whatever this thing is you have to get rid of. So I'm just using this as a visual aid. Like we're going to help you get clarity on whether it's useful to your life or not and help you release things that you may be associating. Often we project like I ha I was holding this when this really happy memory happened or this person gave it to us to me and we project our feelings and emotions into the thing. And therefore they hold it for us. And that's totally fine. That's how brains and, and human beings work. It's a way to associate and hold something for us. We're just going to help you get clarity on, is this some, is this item worth keeping? Or do I want to change how I keep it? Or do I want to release some of the things that I stuck to it? Like the things I projected into it, do I want to let them go? Or, so it's not, you know, we're not going to go through and say, just get rid of it. And we, so we invite you to just pick one thing and we'll kind of help, we'll go through this process where we'll help you get clarity on what is it that I have in here? Why is it important? 
what do I need to keep about, what do I want to keep? Memories, sweet feelings, whatever. And is there a better way to do it? Um, and then you will have clarity on what's right for you. Um, Rick it could t- take something general like books. Um, again, in all of our work around clutter and letting go, um, it's really easy to think of the books. And maybe that's where you are. They're just, they're not individuals. And you really can imagine, like, if you want to let go of them, that's your intention, to pack them up and and let them all go. Um, When I had thousands of books, I have about 25 in physical form now. That's a big difference. If I had, if I had take, if what I did is I, when I was working with Carol on the Clearing Clutter program is I took, I took one, two or three books and I, I actually had them and I was, I was going to make a choice related to those three books to let it go, keep it, even recycle or trash it. Um, about five or six books actually ended up in the trash because I, I couldn't imagine handing them off to someone else, (laughs) just like my statement. Um, so that, that's something to, to be aware of. Someone said, um, do my taxes. Um, I'm not sure you may relate that to something old, this old thing that I thought I wanted and now I'm going to let go of it. Um, maybe it's this resistance or rebellion. Like you could, you could have a rebellion about doing taxes, this old rebellion. (laughs) And I'm going to let go of that. Uh, to make room for me to do my taxes. That's how you could structure it if you wanted. If you're feeling just resistance to doing your taxes, it doesn't necessarily fit what we're we're going to be tuning to for the workshop. So, I, I, mean, I do think that could fit. If it's something that keeps coming up, a pattern that you have, it could be that you want to get rid of an old pattern. So there's I have, I have done that myself, just kind of not... Doing my taxes means, you know, what does it mean to you? And so you can take that concept. But if it's just the taxes themselves, not the pattern, then there might be, it might be harder to use this. Um, okay. Boxes full of files, notes and workshops. Yeah. And again, if you have boxes, pick a box. If you have files, pick a file if you can. The idea is to do this. So you're not trying to, f- like, you're not trying to feed the baby a watermelon. You're trying to give it a bite of watermelon. Um, so that your system can learn how to do this and not associate it with having the watermelon sho- shoved down its throat. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And, and it is, I think sometimes people will, someone share that they tossed everything seven months ago, um, from that they kept from scarcity, fear and lack of, and fear of the unknown, fear of lack. That can be like, sometimes we do it reactionary. We're going to invite you to go through this. And I'm not, I don't know if they did or not, but like, it's like, oh, this stuff's too much. I'm just going to get rid of all of it, whether I know it, what's valuable to me or not. We're going to try to take you through in a way that gives you the wisdom and the clarity and the the quiet confidence to make these decisions. Piles of clothes, useful lamps belong to my parents. Yeah. So thank you. You, by sharing. You've helped tune Kathy and I, and I think also we shared this tuning because these are the things that come up for humans. And even though you may be focused on one thing today, um, a week from now, something else may come up. Maybe you see some clothes that you're, or uh, some furniture or something like that. So the good news is that EFT tapping, which we're going to be using, and if you're not familiar with it. We're not teaching it tonight, but you can go to thrivingnow.com slash tapping um, and get a free guide um, and sign up for some tips and things um, by email. You can follow along with us. You know, the cool thing about tapping is that it tends by, by doing what we just did, by identifying, IDing something, it allows your energy to flow into that, even though we may be tapping on something that's a bit different, it's going to take, it can take what is helpful to you and let the rest go. Um, yeah. So 
Yeah, so we're going to, um, someone shared a, one box of files about mediumship. I'm no longer excited about a marriage um, or can regret giving my house over to my son and his family. It was the right thing to do. Um, I had no longer have a place to live. Uh, so regret is one of the emotions that can come up if we give away something before we've processed this. And the processing can be really beautiful. And once our system gets used to this, we're... Rick um, and Carol have a beautiful clearing clutter uh, program that goes through the items, getting rid of items and your stuff. So if you want to go deeper, that's really useful. But I had, I was, I was not as cluttered as some people, but I had a lot of stuff years ago. And when they did the clearing clutter program, I was early in my relationship with them and I offered to um, edit the videos and the transcripts. So I went through the program twice, tapping as I went, editing the vo the videos and the audio, uh, the audios and the pro um, transcripts. And about a week after that, I got up. I couldn't, I couldn't not get up. I got up at five in the morning for like 10 days and cleaned through everything. And I had to have a moving truck come and take things to the women's shelter. There was so much stuff I got rid of and it just felt natural and organic and really aligned for me. There wasn't regret or angst as I was getting rid of this stuff. It's like, this no longer fits in my life. I want the space. And when we clear out things that are no longer active and viable in our life, the ener the noise, there's like things have noises and, and energetic noises and they're kind of pinging us and pulling at us. And when we clear them out, there's a lot more space to do other things. So, um, I think that it's really beautiful, the work you're doing here. If you can, realize this might be a little tough at moments, like you might feel things that don't feel great, but you're just gently teaching your system how to get clarity and what to release when so that you'll have for the rest of your life a lot more ease around it. Well, just to let you know, um, we're going to be taking a break somewhere around the 50-minute to 60-minute mark for seven minutes um, to give us a chance to integrate and tend to our needs but please in the meantime any time that you need to um and it, we are recording so um if you're done for the for the session you can you feel free to take care of yourself and uh and drop off and come back and listen and tap later we do invite you to now before we start getting into the as we start getting into the emotions and the blocks and the like to bring yourself a little more present. A lot of words have been shared. We've been tuning in and you've been IDing something. As you take a breath, see if you can notice gravity working. A lot of our body tension is to resist being a puddle on the floor. Mm -hmm. And when we're making emotional changes, even considering letting go of something, our body can add more tension. So one of the real skills is calming and allowing, your, allowing gravity, your body to find the right sweet spot between gravity relaxing your tissues, your jaw, and becoming like, ah, <laughs> you know, you, you find the right little sweet spot. You might notice that there's a little bit more movement as you let gravity sink you into the seat. <sighs> so you take a breath. And allowing yourself to confidence as well. You're here. That means you've got a good dose of courage. You've got skills that you're bringing and you're developing some new skills tonight. And that allows yourself to, to lift into and be present with this. Because the first thing I'd like to ask is, how would you complete this statement? I can't let go of this. Because I can't let go of this because if you'd like, try on a slightly different flavor. 
I won't let go of this because. And you're welcome to share if something, if you get a clear answer or if you get, have confusion, we invite you to share this in the chat. So for instance, for me, I don't want to let go of this image of me in San Francisco because I like that picture of that kind of jet setting, like, oh, I'm in a cool, I'm cool, I'm going to the city all the time. Why aren't you going to the city? Like, kind of like, oh, I'm a, I'm a uh, cool, like, not cool, just like a sophisticated person that goes to the city and sees all these cool things. Like, I like, that makes me feel yummy inside, like, to imagine myself doing that um, and seeing my friends and feeling like it. It matches the image of what I see on TV for people living exciting lives. And there's part of me that's attached to that. Yet I'm living a much less exciting life than if I let go of that and created new things. Um, oh. And somebody said, you know, I, I can't let go of it because I'm, it may be important to me in the near future. That's, yeah. I spent so much I, money. I can't let go of this because I spent so much money on it. Yeah, some cost, you got to keep it. Um, 50 years of journals because I just can't. Um, and again, if you are saying, I actually want to like, and this is the answer to that question, I'm just checking because sometimes, you know, we'll land on something that, oh, I just can't get rid of it. And it actually is true. Like there would be. It's your Everest. It's too personal to this, but it, um, just being aware of that. And it may be that you don't want to, maybe you think you should, well, we'll, we'll take you through this top. We get clarity. If something really means a lot to you, maybe through this process, you find out you want to keep them very much and keep them in a nice way, an organized way, or you might want to scan that like for journals, maybe you want to scan them in some place or so, or go through and pull out the parts that matter to you. So it's not a black or white, all or nothing kind of thing. Always. If there's a lot of emotion around it, it's okay to have to want those things. I just think it's rather than stuffed in the box in the back of a closet. I don't know if that's what you do, but I do that for my old journals. Maybe if they're important to me, I could pull them out and make sure they're organized in a way I could actually look at them and experience them in a way that makes it more delicious. A couple. Of I may be giving away a part of myself. I yeah. can't bring myself to do it because it involves going to my mom's house to deal with it. That's, yeah. Can't get um, rid of this because it's my life and identity. That's a big deal, right? And if it's a thing, you know, that's, this is the benefit of this work is that I, and I, I don't know what, what actually you're tuned to, but I've, I, I believe that things can weasel their way into our identity. Whereas to me, our, my identity, I want to be something that, that is in my core, not externalized into something I own, something that I'd even do that is like a job or something like that. So it's, it's, and, and I'm not the, alone in that. Um, we can feel stronger and clearer in our identity the more that we are internally referenced rather than externally identified, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, and someone was sharing about letting go of a marriage and they've been in the marriage for almost 25 years. So love them. I need, I know it needs to end. So there's a couple, someone said that I put too much time into this, too much effort, too much money. Our the human brain tends to think that if I put a lot into this, I can't give that up. And so one of the, th one of the flaws that they point out in investing is I've already put so much money into it, I should continue. I shouldn't just cut my losses. Um, and it is a human, humans tend to like want to hold on to things. They put a lot of energy, time, focus, love into. Versus that love was, you know, in the moment, maybe you love that person very much. You're glad to be there. Can you feel the, the importance of that love in that moment and realize that maybe it's not, a, it's not necessary to still keep giving it? I don't have to, even though I spend a lot of money on those courses and I'll lose them if I don't pay the annual subscription, 
I don't have to continue paying because I'm not actually going to ever watch the courses. I can appreciate that they meant a lot, having access to them meant a lot in the past. And now it's okay to let that go for a, sil a silly analogy, but. Um, Let's do some tapping. Would you, would you like to get us started tonight? So I invite you to just take a nice deep breath. See if you can breathe to your toes. And when you breathe out, let yourself sink into your body. Feel your butt in your chair, your feet on the floor. If you can, let yourself look around the room and notice that you can look around the Zoom room that you're in, you know, all these people. You can look around the room here you're in. Notice that you're safe. Rick and I are here. We have this container. We care about you. You can relax and let things process in a way that feels good for you. And we'll just start karate chop. Even though I have a lot of feelings about this old thing I want to let go of. Even though I have a lot of feelings about this thing I want to let go of. Some resentment. Some resentment. Some longing. Some longing. It's very confusing. It's really confusing. And I'm not sure how to process it all. And I'm not sure how to process it all. I'm going to select one thing. I'm willing to select one thing. And just focus on that. And just focus on that. Top of the head. There may be an answer I haven't even thought of yet. There may be an answer I haven't even thought of yet. I bro, and I'm really curious how I can have more clarity and freedom. I'm really curious about how I could have more clarity and freedom. Side of the eye. I feel resistance to letting go. I do feel resistance to letting go. Under the eye, and there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Under the nose. I'm here right now. I'm here right now. Chin with all these amazing people. With all these amazing people. Hollywood, just to get clarity on what's right for me. To get clarity about what's right for me. Under the arm, what if I don't pre-decide what I'm going to do? What if I don't pre-decide what I'm going to do? Top of that, what if I just go through the process and feel my feelings? What if I just go through the process and feel my feelings? And I can decide then. And I can see what I can decide then. Just take a breath and see if that's okay for you. Humans don't like yeah, indecision. We don't like unknown, so we often decide oh, I'm going to get rid of this thing. I'm going to go through this process to get rid of this thing. Versus, can I be curious about my feelings about this thing and what a good solution is? It might be at the end that I want to get rid of it. It might be that I want to put it in a special frame and put it on the wall, or I might want to give it to someone. Like There's, there's lots of different outcomes that we don't know. And when we pre-decide that we must do it a certain way, it really does limit our creativity and the ease that we're going through. And I did also want to point, oh, sorry, did you no. want to, okay. I was going to do another time thing. Okay. Just before we go into that, I wanted to point out a couple people said they noticed the confusion all their stuff adds to their life, the noise that their stuff adds to their life. I want to point out that that may be a very, very smart thing you learn to do as a child or as an adult. There may have been some times in your life when something was overwhelming and you just didn't know how to deal with it. And by having a lot of things, a lot of distractions, whether it was activities or things in your house or tasks you had to do, it could have helped you get through a tough time. It could have helped you avoid something you didn't know how to deal with. So we don't want to rip away the support without adding, you know, like, I think it's okay to start working on this process, but if there's old wounds that come up because of like things you were kind of burying under your stuff, it's okay to take baby steps and do a little gentle tapping to start clearing that and healing that. You have more skills now than you probably did at the point that you started creating the noise or confusion, if that's true for you. I'd like to do some tapping just directly on the I can't, I won't. Yeah. So going back to what you discovered, like, I can't because, I can't let go of this because... I won't let go of this because just as you tune into that, now tapping asks you to tune in uh, and even though I, I have some beliefs, even though I have some beliefs, 
It feels like I can't let go of this. It feels like I can't let go of this. Because. Because. You just fill in your because. Because I'll let go of my identity. Uh, because I don't want to feel. Somebody needs to put some material to let go of love that we create, you know, the love that we put into something. I said I wouldn't. I said I wouldn't, yeah. Oh. I'm in the process of looking at this more deeply. I'm in the process of looking at this more deeply. Up in the head. I can't let go of this. I can't let go of this. Can I? Can I? Eyebrow. I won't let go of this. I won't let go of this. Will I? Will I? Side of the eye. I can't let go of this. I can't let go of this. Undo that. Look at this reason. Look at this reason. In the nose. I can't let go of this. I can't let go of this. Chen, look at this reason I have. Look at this reason I have. And I get the sense I have more than one reason. I get the sense I have more than one reason. Oh. That's okay. That's okay. In the arm. I want the freedom of my own clarity. I want the freedom of my own clarity. There's some oldness here. There's some oldness here. Top of the head. There's some old decisions. There's some old decisions. Eyebrow. There's some old beliefs. There's some old beliefs. Side of the eye. There's some old commitments. There's some old commitments. Under the eye. There's some old money I spent. There's some old money I spent. <laughs> One of those. There's some invested heart in this. There's some invested heart in this. Chen. I want my clarity and freedom. I want my clarity and freedom. Alone. I can't let go of this. I can't let go of this. Can I? Can I? No, I won't let go of this. I won't let go of this. Will I? Will I? I'm a... I am looking at this fresh right now. I am looking at this fresh right now. Ooh. One of the things I noticed when we were going through that tapping, and also I saw someone shared that they they gave the house that their husband, she and her husband, had built seventeen years ago, put lots of love into it, a safe place, a castle, a happy place. Um. One of the things that can happen is if we hold on really tightly to appreciation, I think that there's a concept, um, I learned this from my uh, radical honesty group that I go to and I thought it was brilliant. If we don't let ourselves fully appreciate an experience because we're afraid we won't have other good experiences, so we want to kind of hold on to that sweetness. We won't let it, we kind of like we want to like, oh, I really appreciate you, but I'm not going to experience it all because I want to savor it. And then we just kind of leave it. We're always holding on and never savoring. It becomes um, as stale and toxic as resentments that we don't share. We create a, a pedestal that we put the person or the thing on as being amazing and perfect. One more. So, and that can be with the house, like, and I've done this with people too. They become perfect and ideal, and I felt amazing in there. And there was never a day when the toilet stopped up or the plumbing needed to be fixed or the electricity, like everything was perfect and wonderful with the person or the thing or the or the experience. And instead of like, oh, I can savor the love that we put put into creating this place, the experience of it. Well, I think love is eternal. The experience is like we have that. It was like we created this thing in this world that never existed before. That particular joining of our love and our effort and our attention is, was there. And can I really experience the appreciation for that experience and then let it pass through so that I'm not creating an over-idealized memory of something and then I need to hold on to it because nothing in the real world is going to live up to that amazingness. It becomes this this token ideal thing that I can't, I, nothing else can live up to. So I really, that was to me a big aha when they were talking about that in this class I took. It's like, I do that a lot because I was afraid I wouldn't get other good experiences. If I had a good experience with someone, 
I would appreciate it some, but I would kind of hold on to the good feeling and then I would idealize it. So I just wanted to point that out because that can get in the way and that can really block us from just like, oh my God, that was the most, that was such a delicious experience. It was so good. Just really feeling the joy of that and then moving forward and experiencing whatever the next moment has as its own unique self in the next moment, the next experience separate. Which is kind of our, we have four aspects we're going to be touching on tonight. We're, we're, that one, what you just described is like, what do I want to keep from this? Yeah. So, for example, if I'm, if I'm ending a, a relationship or like in, in my body, I don't act, actually ever end relationships. They change forms. They change right distance, right depth, like how close we are, how much we know about what's going on in each other's lives and things like that. But like for me, um, someone who is a really close friend and now isn't actually filling that role, the right distance is like, hey, I still care about that person. I want good things for them, but I'm not going to be like leaving open um, I still want to keep the quality of me as a, as a, as a really good friend. So if, if I wrote in journals, like I've let go of a lot of my journals, not all of them, I have, you know, a big thick one. Right. And it's, it's, it becomes like, oh, if I open up just that one, I'm reminded of my journey. It becomes the thing that reminds me of of how I started. I started writing. I started asking questions of the universe and, and really tuning and listening for what my answer, my clarity was not. Eh. And so like, I still keep that. It's been 20 some 30, 30 years, maybe. So like who keeps journals? I do. Now the, what do I want to keep from it? I just touched on that. I want to keep certain things like, ah, yeah, that, that is part of what my life story is. And I want to keep that alive. And the fact of the matter is, is the physical body. It's sometimes a lot more potent for us to take something out and see our handwriting. Um, some things I, I don't need that. Like you, you may, as you're starting to tune into this, you may think like, you know, a picture of that or a, a little video of it with me talking about it, it might be enough to, to hold on to and the physical thing can go. This is, this is the clarity that we're looking for, not the, I'm, I'm letting it go. It's, it's finding your own clarity. And that, that almost always, if it's, if it's in your life, you haven't acted on it. It almost always is that there's something that you want to keep that you think you're throwing the baby out with the bath water kind of thing. <laughs> um, that, oh, if I, if I do this, it means I lose my identity. That was in the chat. Well, I, lose I, lose, I, lose, I lose my connection with someone. Um, whereas... It may be that as you get clearer, like, oh, the connection is what is important. Like, how can I maintain that connection even as I let go of the form and fashion of a relationship that brought us a certain kind of connection? How do I, how do I want to have a connection um, to, to this that matters to me? That was a lot of words. I'm feeling like I'm maybe bouncing around because I'm doing some of my own processing here, too. But ask, what do I want to keep? That's the essential. What do you want to keep about yourself, about the thing, person, place, relationship? Anyone oh. there in the chat? For me, I'd like to keep my sense of, I, I'm someone who likes to explore and, and do have fun adventures. I want to keep my dignity, dignity, 
Dignity can sometimes be the hardest thing that I know of to keep hold of. So just notice what it is you think you'll lose too. If you like, what is it? That, what aspect of it do you want to hold on to? I think that distinction can make a huge difference in, in how we deal with it. Oh, well, I just landed for me. Um, this particular friendship really showed my resilience, the resilience of my love, like what I could be in my yes and hard and real, like hard doesn't make it bad. And so as I, as I feel into that, it's like, oh yeah, that relationship was hard. And it really, so when I wrote down resilience, you know, like, oh, I don't want to lose, you know, I want to keep my sense of being a resilient friend, which isn't quite the same as devoted, but like it, there's a quality of capacity and skill of being able to maintain a friendship, even through hard times does part of you think that you won't be resilient if you, anymore if you let go of that relationship i think that's part of the other aspect is that um part of my identity is a quality of devotion mm -hmm. and so I had said at the time the relationship was transitioning that we would always be close friends, and that has not been what has happened. And so, um, and that's not all on me. It's it's life and pandemic and changes and all kinds of things. Um, so that the fear of like, oh, this sort of would. I think it's it's the quality of quitter like when i when i when i gave away my first keyboard um because it was causing too much distress for me to see something that i really hadn't like gotten where i wanted to go it was an old thing at that point but i didn't know about tapping i didn't know how to process it and i just gave it away the quality of quit i'm gonna tap um the quality of being a quitter stuck with me around music for a long time and it still feels as i'm tuning into it still like a three four and that's an old thing like that old belief that you're a quitter if you let go of an old thing <laughs> an old relationship um this is you know i it's not true it, my identity is not as a quitter um so that's why I, yeah, go ahead. I'm just, I'm wondering, I think for some of us, there's a commit, we make, in the moment we make a silent or verbal commitment. Like my thought was I would go to San Francisco at least once a month. And that was my kind of commitment to myself and to the universe. And you made it, you were, whether you said it out loud or not, you're like, I will, this relationship, we will still be close friends to the house, to, to a marriage, <laughs> to the journals, like, you know, yeah. her at each other, even though I made a commitment. Even though I made a commitment. Whether it was silent or spoken out loud. Silent, spoken out loud, or when I bought it. <laughs> or investing money in it. It's okay for me to change my mind. Kathy says it's okay for me to change my mind. Even though it doesn't feel like it's okay to change my mind. Even though it doesn't always feel okay for me to change my mind. Situations change. Dear heavens, situations do change. And maybe I can give myself permission to change my commitment. And maybe I can give myself permission to change my commitment. What if that commitment was true in the moment? That commitment was true in the moment. I know, but reality does change. Oh, well, reality does change side of the eye and I'm trying to force myself to hold on to a stale and outdated reality. 
I am holding on to a stale and outdated reality. Under the eye. <laughs> Under the eye. Even though I have feelings about that. Even though I have feelings about that. Under the nose. I want to be present with what is true. I want to be present with what is true now. Chin, I'm not aligned with that old commitment anymore. I'm actually not aligned with that old commitment anymore. Collarbone, and just like commitments of any kind. And just like commitments of any kind. Under the eye, it's okay to acknowledge that. It is okay to acknowledge that. Top of the head and renegotiate as I need. And renegotiate as I need. Just take a breath and be with that. See what, what comes up for you. Some of you may be like, nope, if I make a commitment, I'm going to stick with it no matter what. That I tend to be that way. And I've also relaxed a little bit over time because I think in the moment, we can, you know, the way things are aligned, we can really mean it and we can do everything we, within reason to make that work. And there may be times when it's just not a, like, it may be harming one or both parties. It could be just no longer serving both parties. A contract is null and void if one party doesn't contribute to it. So if I make a commitment with the universe that I'm going to do this thing and it doesn't feel aligned to me anymore, what if I just like, huh? Okay, what if instead I can look at updating that might be once a month I'm going to try to do something that's like culturally, you know, cool for me, wherever it is. Maybe I can take away the location restriction I put on it when I first made it and still create something that's important to me. Like I like doing cultural things. I like going out with my friends. COVID is hopefully dying down so I can do that. Even though I still have some attachments here. Even though I have some, still have some attachments here. And some of them are old and outdated. Some of them are old and outdated. Some are even stale. Some, some are really stale. There might even be a moldy one or two. There might even be a moldy one or two. A crusty one or two. A crusty one or two of that. <coughs> yeah. I want to let go of any old attachments that are outdated and stale. I want to let go of any old attachments that are outdated or stale. Up the head. These outdated regrets. These outdated regrets. Eyebrow. These outdated commitments. These outdated commitments. Sorry, the eye. Even this outdated connection to this thing. Even this outdated connection to this thing. Under the eye. Not all my connections are outdated. Not all my connections are outdated. I mean, there are things I'm really connected to. There are things I'm really connected to. Chin, and there's some things that are old. And there are some things that are old. Although, meaning they're not fresh and alive for me anymore. Meaning they're not alive and fresh for me anymore. I'm in the process of feeling into this. I'm in the process of feeling into this. Okay. I do not need to keep them. If they're stale and outdated. I do not need to keep them if they're stale and outdated. It's okay to transform them in some important in, in some way. It's okay to trans trans transform them in trans some them. important way. In yeah. some important way. Yeah, thank you. <sighs> I think it's important to be able to quit things that are not good for us. That's when Rick was talking about this destroyer, that was an archetype. Uh, um, we took a class on psychodemographics on how to attract people that were good fits for us. And um, we had very, very similar. She, in fact, the lady that was running the class asked us if we cheated off each other. We're like, no, we're in different states where we took the mm -hmm. death. Um, but Rick's destroyer is much slower than mine. I will pull the plug sooner in most cases than Rick will. I'm still not super like, I don't give up on people easily. And there's times when I think it's really okay. Quitting things can be very healthy at times. And I, you know, other people are sharing that they were, you know, they were called a quitter early on. That might be a really beautiful thing to tap on. Um, I, you know, the, sometimes we'll spend our whole life trying to prove that one person wrong from back, back when we were 18 or three or seven or whatever it is. And then we're not running our life according to what we want. We're running it as according to, I want to prove this person wrong. 
Um, I certainly have done that. And when I've tapped on it, sometimes I'll imagine that other person in a chair across from me and I'll just tap while I talk to that person and say, you know, even though I want to prove that I'm not a quitter, you know, I just, and I can just ramble, just tapping on it and tell that person how angry I am or how, like, how dare you say that to me or whatever. You can really clear it there. Um, and I, the regrets when we didn't quit soon enough sometimes can be the other side of that. It can be really tough to let go of. And I think that we do the best we can in the moment. Maybe we didn't quit for whatever reason, but we, that was, we can be free now. We can do things to get free now so we can live our life really powerfully. We're going to take a, a seven minute break. Um, and as we go into that, one of the, one of the, one of you, thank you, said, I recognize that I'm not the same person that I was when I, in this case, was taking a particular course. Um, we're going to go into, after the break, what are you making space for? And part of that can be if we let go of something like, and the, like, if I, Let me, let me get clear. There can be something that's part of our identity. Like, I'm the kind of person, if they spent a lot of time doing something that I didn't want to do, or if I didn't say no to something that was really a no for me, I'm the type of person that regrets that for the rest of my life, or I'm the type of person that will always be hard on myself about that. So I never do it again. That is like an orientation. How do, how do, how am I with this thing that happens? Um, part of moving into a new energy space is having some clarity about like, yeah, that's the way I was oriented. And now I'm choosing, I'm focusing my energy on being the type of person who, what, learns from the things that were not a yes for me, as painful as they were. Um, I'm the type of person that puts my energy toward what I want. I'm the type of person that drives looking forward and not in the rear view mirror. Like there's a lot of ways of, of doing that. And it's helpful in tapping and in energy work to have some clarity about like, oh, okay. If this moves on, I'm, my orientation is going to be this way, this towards this. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. And when you move things out, there's, there's spaciousness. And maybe what you're moving into is like, oh, I'm the type of person that really is starting to enjoy spaciousness. I'm enjoying simplicity. Um, that type of thing. We'll touch on that a little bit more. Um, we're going to pause the recording. And if you're listening to the recording, we encourage you to take a little break here yourself for integration and the like. Welcome back, everyone. Ah. I'd like to just add something to what you said about the um, renegotiating with ourselves. Like we get to change based on reality. Um, some of us have, we can get really stuck in and I found this analogy worked a lot when I read cuddle parties and talk about people wanting to change their minds. If something, like, have you gone to a movie or been out with someone who said they would be there but didn't want to? Um, just kind of tune into that for a moment. It generally wasn't fun for anybody. Like, most of the time you can kind of tell the person's just honoring a commitment they don't really want to, to be there. Um, it's really kind of awkward and uncomfortable, and nobody's really living their best life or feeling aligned. I believe the universe is very glad for us to be aligned in the moment. And that people that are resourced are glad for us to be aligned in the moment. People that are not resourced will sometimes try to call us out and make us honor a commitment that no longer feels valid because they don't know how else to get that need met. Or they're very, they, 
when people are scared, they sometimes become rigid. They hold on tight. So I just invite you to like notice that you don't generally like it when someone honors their commitment if they don't want to do it. Um, and that there's certainly like, like if you're in the middle of dinner, you don't want someone to stand up and leave. There's like that would be awkward, but you also want people to honor. There can be balances and there's things we like or don't like, but being aligned with that can be being in our own alignment is really important. So I just, I wanted to add that because sometimes people changing their mind have trouble with that. So we're going to talk yeah, about, no. open. Oh, yeah, we're, we're going to talk about what we're making room for. Yeah, if we're exactly. letting go. Yeah. What are we making room for? Um, love to hear from you. Like if, if you let go even of the strain and stress that you're feeling about it. If you let go of um, needing to do something about it. <laughs> um, there was a, there's a, a lamp on our kitchen counter. And part of my wanting to clear the clutter was to get it out of there. But my partner does not have time to answer the question that I have about it. And I don't know where, it's not mine. It was perhaps given to us, perhaps loaned to us, whatever. It's just on the priority scale. And so as I looked at it, I'm looking at this thing and I'm, I'm tapping and I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. I feel so strained. If I get rid of it, I do this, blah, blah, blah. And then it was like, you know, if I let go of even having to do anything with this, <laughs> I think the problem, but it leaves room for me to tend to things that are actually right, that I actually have the energy for, that I actually can craft and, and make a difference in. Mm -hmm. Ah, can you feel the light? <laughs> it's palpable to me. <laughs> if I focus on that lamp, it's like, I don't know what to do with <laughs> it. You know, so there's being aware that you want to leave more room. Like I, I want to leave more room for relationships, which have a mutual, um, mutual desire right now. One that is like, yeah, I don't want to lose being resilient, but I'm probably not going to, um, I'd like some relationships that are easy. You know, I'd like, a, I'd like a friendship in town, which is easy, where we seem to sync up, where it's easy to schedule, that there's not like a lot to process, that we can share what's alive in our lives. See, oh, yeah, see, share, be, be in that, go for a walk together. Ah, what would you like to make room for? I, someone shared, I know this is way, was way too big, but I would like to downsize enough so I could live in a tiny house if I could. And I don't think that's too big. There can be like, that can be built out of baby steps. So like, if I keep this, so one way I would imagine, I could imagine doing this is like, I pick up the item and I say, do I, do I want to make room in a tiny house for this? Would this add joy and well-being to me in my tiny house? No? Okay, then maybe I can let, find what would I like, what is the right intention for this? And I ask the item sometimes. It may sound a little bit strange, but I'm like, where would you like to go? And things that have a lot of animation, things that have been given a lot of love and focus, I often find a really clear answer. And sometimes like a picture of someone's face, and I'm like, oh, I can give this to my sister, or my neighbor was saying the other day, or whatever. Or maybe it wants to go to the women's shelter, or maybe it's just tired. It wants to go rest someplace, so like recycled or whatever. So I just, you know, just finding baby steps towards that thing you want to create and asking yourself, my vision of my life, does this fit, is powerful. So remember, too, that you can make an, uh, an emotional journey with a little bit of skill. So, for example, um, I would like the freedom to be able to go live in another country. 
I don't know when or if that'll ripen or whether it will be right for my family or even which country. But here's some of the things that I, I do. Like I look at like, oh, you know, what are some options for me if I did that? Well, if I'm never planning on coming back, we've, my family has practiced letting go of things for money or free through Facebook Marketplace, through Macari, through um, Goodwill and other types of, of places. So like we're practiced every once in a while, about every quarter, we'll go and we'll do three or four things. It isn't directly related to that. But if I was moving closer, like, you know, I really want to consider our lease is going to be up in about a year. I'd like to really consider that. I might go through and say, well, these are things that I'm, are precious. You know, this is my, these are my two boxes of things that, you know, these are my precious. And um, yeah, they're not going anywhere. These are things that I might loan out or find a new home with somebody that I, you know, I might put it out there to my friends list. Is anyone really looking for this? And I'd love to have you keep it or loan or give it to you. Um, and then practicing some other things. This is kind of letting go of like, <clears throat> we can get stuck with I'm stuck. That can be the old thing. Like, oh, I'm, I've just got too many things to ever like live this dream. Y if you let go of that notion, it can free up energy to say, hey, yeah, these are the things that are my precious. Um, and these are things that um, would move on somewhere. And here are some directions that I can practice letting go of some things just so that it's fresh, it's, it's alive in me, that I can do it. It's not a burden. It makes it easy. Yep. Yeah. And so focus. More, yeah, well, more common focus. If you envision that home, what's very, and I do think getting rid of clutter, definitely people often come to my house and say it feels quiet and warm and easy to be in. And I think that's because I routinely go through and get things that don't belong out i give them to people or give them. um so if you envision that place that that space that feels very calm and and relaxed and focused you can just say does does this item fit in there huh not as it is how would i want to change it or does it not fit at all where would it like to go elsewise that can i think having that clear picture of what you want to create makes it a lot easier to know if those items fit than or not and when we don't have that clear clarity, we're just trying to, we just know we should do something, but we don't know where we're going. It's very hard to make decisions that work for us. And then there's that fear. What if I'm getting rid of something I need? Even though I've got some fears about letting go of things. Even though I have some fears about letting go of things. I'm wanting more what? Wanting oh, more. Nice. Clarity, what? focus. Focus, clarity, focus. Ease. <laughs> Quieter. Quiet. Space. I bet I could make some small changes. I bet I could make some small changes. That would start giving me that emotional experience. That would start giving me that emotional experience. Not bad. But it's all too big. It's all too big. Eyebrow. Is it really... Is it really? So, yeah, I definitely can look at it that way. I can, I definitely can look at it that way. Under the eye. But I could straighten a shelf. I could straighten a shelf. Under that, or a corner. Or a corner. <sighs> Tune to what I'm wanting more of. Tune to what I'm wanting more of. Meditate with some music that reminds me of that. Meditate with some music that reminds me of that. Um, move, walk, stretch. <laughs> walk, stretch. In a way that activates that in me. In a way that activates that in me. That might make it a lot easier. That might make it a lot easier. Yeah. I'm becoming the type of person that, who? I'm, I'm becoming the type of person who creates walk. every day, whatever it is that you want. So in tapping or energy work, 
notice that I put the affirmation after we touched on a lot of different things, right? The I won't, I can't, um, what I might lose. We touched on those things. Now, you could do all of that around an object in um, a few minutes. So, like, here's some headphones. I haven't had these in my ear for four months at least, okay? They're the ones that I bought. Um, I, then I spent $8 to replace one of the little ear thing, things that the, the silicon things. Um, and, and I still have not done anything with them because I have another pair <laughs> that I like a lot better and they're the ones, but you know, I could tap on, whoa, this is the thing. I can't let go of it because I made that extra $8 investment. And I'd feel so stupid if I just gave it away. But where would it go? Uh, notice I'm just letting the flow. And you know, I'm really like some more space on my desk. And it doesn't belong in my in my in my shelf. It doesn't belong in my drawer. It doesn't belong actually in my life. I bet somebody might like this. They work. Ah, I'm open to finding the right place for it. That, we don't have to spend 90 minutes on the little things. I already, like, you'll notice, I you can't see it, but it's been sitting in this one spot. I now, by moving it, have more space, okay? I'm I'm also noticing some other things that are about ready to go through the similar process. It's now on the other side of my desk and it's heading out. I, that's what it took though. It's been sitting there and gnawing at me every time I look at it a little bit, not conscious, not a big deal. If you ask me, say, is that bothering you? I'd be like, no, but it is because it's, it's, it's clutter. It's not something I want anymore. It's an old thing I spent money on. And that's, this is how you do it, um, can do it. It doesn't work for everyone. But wow, when you're honest about the I, what it is, the I won't, I can't, I just can't, I won't. And you do a few rounds on it, you'll notice that your energy is moving around it. And it could be like, you know, I am in a place right now where this matters to me. Have it. To have it in my world, it matters. And so I'm going to find a place for it in my world. If you do that and you keep it, what you did is you let go of all of the clutter energy about it and you landed it on the sacred energy of it. This matters to me. It Part of me feels like, you know, my intuition is I might actually need this. It's not sitting here in my primitive brain, like, oh, I need to hoard and clutter and hold on to everything. Yeah, no, but it actually feels like, you know, I, I may need that bowl. You know, I really may need those bowls. It doesn't feel like it's ripe in time. You can do, you can do it that way, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And someone was sharing about their journals and the journals would not fit in the tiny house, but there might be love or things that are important in that. So if, if it feels like, oh, it's not ready to go completely, like, do I want to scan these in? Do I want to pull certain pages out? Do I want to keep one year that met the most and a few other pages and scan everything else? How do I, how could I hold this so that it, it feels yes and? It may not fit in your tiny house, but it might fit digitally or might one journal might feel like a really sweet memory. And there's no right or wrong about that. And someone said that they have trouble letting go of things because they feel lonely. Um, and what I'd like to point out is we often put our emotions in things like we have experience and we associate that there. What emotions we put in there, we can also invite back out. So when I was getting rid of some things when I was moving, mm -hmm. I just, I would just like, I would think, I would like, thank you so much for holding that love and that experience for me. I'm going to, I would like to reclaim it to myself now, but if it, some of them that felt ready, like that item felt like it was ready to move on and be used for something else in a different way. So I invited the love and when I left my house, I went around my house and I thanked every wall that, like I just kind of touched the walls and I said, 
thank you so much for being part of my life. And I invited the love and the safety and the care that I'd experienced to, it could still be present with the house, but I was inviting my identity back in myself. We have mirror neurons, which allow us to identify outside objects as part of us. So when we our car gets dinged, a car that we've driven a lot, people will get very, very upset because it feels like a physical assault. I can drive, when I drive my car, I can steer it within an inch of something because I know exactly where the edges are. I've had it for many years. When, so if we want to let something go, it's important to, I think, often to thank it and to be with it and to invite our sense of identity to come back to us, our love, sense of connection to come back to us. And then it might be easier to, to have more connection. Um, and I, I did love someone share that they put things out on the curb and it just disappeared and they didn't even remember it. Some things are like that. I had an organizer come in and she was great. I, would, I was like, as a box fills up with things for the women's shelter, I would like you to take it out of the house right away. As trash gets filled up, I would like you to take it out. I don't want it to sit by the door because I will then feel pulled by it. But the things that I'd already decided she whisked away and it got to be used for something else in a really nice way. And I didn't have to be the whisker. Um, and so you might, you know, trade with a friend, say, I need to do some cleaning. Would you like to trade? You know, your job will be to, as the box gets filled, to put it in your car and take it to Goodwill and I'll do the same for you. Um, if that, just some ideas on how to let go of some things. Ah. Uh. So let's tune back into the old thing that I, I thought I wanted and where you are in the letting go process, what clarity you have, what emotions and things that you still feel, how true does the, I can't let it go of this because still feel. And you're welcome to share in the chat. Right. And, and if you're aware why you don't want to let it go, let me, um, you're welcome to share that too. <clears throat> Even though I am getting clarity here. Even though I am getting clarity here. It still surprises me sometimes how much is involved. It still surprises me sometimes how much is involved. I have a lot of feels about my things. I have a lot of feels about my things. And I accept where I am and how I feel. And I accept where I am and how I feel. Had, I have feelings about these things. I have feelings about these things. Eyebrow. And I'd like real skill. And I'd like real skill. I, the eye. I want the skill of getting clarity. I want the skill of getting clarity. Under the eye. I want the skill of letting go. I want the skill of letting go. In a way that feels authentic for me. In a way that feels authentic to me. That feels healing. That feels healing. Chin that feels respectful. That feels respectful. Hold on. And feels free. It feels free. Under the arm. I am quieting the noise. I am quieting the noise. Opposite. I am feeling what I feel. I am feeling what I feel. I appreciate my courage. I appreciate my courage. Oh, that was beautiful. Someone wrote that they've just realized they're grieving, uh, not because of the house I'm letting go of, but 20 years of happy life, my love story, the love of my life, the past, the grief. As long as we're projecting it out on that other object, on the thing, the house, the journal, the you know, whatever it is, it's really hard for us to actually have feel like we can process it it's out there away from us and we don't have the same power and control so if we do have a lot of grief or loneliness or regret working through those things is important um, but noticing that they're not the object itself or the the experience or the dream they're they're emotions that we have that we actually feel and then we can clear them um, and I do invite you, if you if you want to take this deeper, um, Rick's and Carol's Clearing Clutter with EFT. It's at thrivingnow.com forward slash clutter. 
is really beautiful because it takes you through all the, like a lot of the different emotions and a lot of the different processes you go through. And it really did help me tremendously to have a much less cluttered house and just a lot more quiet, ease, focus. Um, and we want you to be able to let go of the stale things. We want you to be able to be aligned with yourself, not just trying to show that you're not a quitter or stick it out even though it's not aligned for you or have all the noise and things that are pulling at you with no room for new possibilities. I do think that's one reason some people feel like they grow old. Not because we're actually old, but because we get so clogged up. We're not having new experiences, so we kind of slow down and we're not getting re-inspired by life. And Would you do a tapping with us on getting clogged up? Because I... That that happens to me on cycles. I think that's why we talk about spring cleaning and yeah. and things like that. But there's a there's a clogging up that happens with my business and ideas and things. I feel like I have to, you know, I have to when it, fa- it starts falling into the have to category, um, is usually a sign that I'm clogged up. So, I'm tapping with yeah, karate chop. All these old ought tos and should haves. All these old ought tos and should haves. All these have tos. All these have tos. All these old patterns. All these old patterns. I haven't had time or focus to see if they fit me anymore. I haven't had time and focus to see if they really fit me anymore. And I haven't really wanted to face all the emotions that are buried there. <laughs> And I haven't really wanted to face all the emotions that are buried there sometimes. And it get re- it's gotten really stale and clogged. And it's gotten stale and clogged. Top of the head, I want more freedom. I want more freedom. I brow. I invite the universe to help me with this. I invite the universe to help me with this. Side of the eye, I don't have to process everything that's clogged in the pipes. I <laughs> do not have to process everything that's clogged in the pipes. Under the eye, but I do have to look at the ones that are stopping everything up. I have to look at the ones that are stopping everything up. Under the nose, universe, please guide me. Ah, oh, universe, please guide me. Jen, I want clarity and clear focus. I want clarity and clear focus. Color one, I don't want to be clogged up. I don't want to be clogged up. Under the eye, I want to experience life as it is right now. I want to experience life as it is right now. Top of that, I want to be aligned with me now, not me in the past. <laughs> yeah. I want to be aligned with me now, not me in the distant past. Please help me identify and release the things that are clogging me up. Please help me identify and release things that are clogging me up. Just take a breath and see what you notice. And you may want to just keep, if you have somebody coming to you now, jot it down. Our brains are tricky. They like to like distract us and then we don't remember what it was. Or have a pen and paper by your bed tonight. Like if as you go to sleep, you might, or just you're waking up or as your dream, you might have some more clarity on why and why and how you're clogging the system up. And I do think so much of this is about we think we, how we think we should be the way we were when we made the commitment or we made the decision about the thing or the event or the experience. And we're not being present with ourselves now. I am a very, very different person than I was 10 years ago. And what was perfect for me then, and I thought, oh, three years yeah, ago. Yeah, last year. Yeah. Last year. <laughs> this morning. Um, I really do think we make decisions based on the information we have in the moment, the way we feel in the moment. And it feels really good in that. It may feel aligned in that space and things change and we're not re-examining them and saying like, when I bought that winter coat back in February, it felt perfect. And God damn it, I'm going to wear this, that, that winter coat in, in July in Albuquerque. Like, because it fit me back then, I've got to fit it now. And it's like, no, this is not a good idea. I'm dying of heat exhaustion. <laughs> so just if that helps, the silly analogy sometimes will help our brain realize that it doesn't have to fit us anymore. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. Right. Really appreciate the courage everyone brought here. This is not an easy subject always.
Hmm. Mm, karate chop. I thought I wanted it. I thought I wanted it. I did want it. I did want it. And now I've got more clarity. But now I've got more clarity. And I'm letting go of the old perspective. Letting go of the old perspective. So I can have a new perspective. So I can have a new perspective. Top head. Some things are going to stay. Some things are going to stay. I brought some things are going to go. Some things are going to go. Time of the eye. And I want to freshen my perspective. And I want to freshen my perspective. Under the eye. I can get a little stuck in old perspective. <laughs> I can get a little stuck in old perspective. I am so human. I am so human. Chin, I got the feels about my things. <laughs> the feels about my things. Collarbone, there's emotions in my stuff. There's emotions in my stuff. There are, there are emotions in my relationships. There's emotions in my relationships. And I accept who I am and how I feel. And I accept who I am and how I feel. So you notice what I touched on there. When we freshen our perspective, and I use this tool in this process to freshen my perspective, it could have been that I decided I wanted to keep them. But now, right now, I'm starting to even feel the next owner. I don't even know what their name, I may never know their name. But I'm starting to feel the energy moving on. There are things that I freshen the perspective on and allows me just to allow it to ripen or be there without distress. There are things that I freshen the perspective on and allows me to actually redirect my energy toward what matters to me now, who I am now. And as Kathy so clearly reminded us, we're not the same person that we were maybe even this morning or before you, you know, 90 minutes ago, before we got together. I believe that we shift and change our weather, our climate, our, our core values can be uh, refined and clarified. And when we do, our perspective on things change. The people in our lives, um, we can start noticing qualities that they have that maybe we didn't before. We can, we can notice that something is actually more valuable and more nourishing to us because we're not, it doesn't fit into clutter anymore. It fits into something that is a sacred choice for it to stay in my world. And I can flow more energy into its enjoyment and other things can take their place. Um, in our home, in someone else's new home, the energy being returned to the universe and recycled, upcycled, things like that. We're at Thriving Now. Uh, support at thrivingnow.com is the email that goes to both Kathy and I. Uh, you can continue this discussion, and we certainly invite you to at thrivingnow.center. If you'd like to become a Circle member, there's a new one-time membership. It starts at a gliding scale, um, and there are even partial and full scholarships available. Thrivingnow.com slash circle to learn more about that. And... Uh, We'll have our upcoming Real Skills workshops. We do two a month. And if you have ideas and things of what would be really alive for you, for us to cover, please email them, support at thrivingnow.com. Bless you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you all yeah. in the circle tonight. Mm -hmm. Have a good day. May you find lots of ease and clarity and, and calm, peaceful spaces. Mm -hmm. Bye. Until next time.